Hello, my name is John Nelson, and I'm so happy to talk to you today. I wish I could be there in person one of these days, but that way you wouldn't get to meet Sparrow. Sparrow, what do I do for my job? Um, sometimes you make maps um, on the computers, and sometimes you do meetings and sometimes you make videos on YouTube. That's, that is exactly right. Thank you so much. I love you. Completely unrehearsed, by the way. It's true. In the last couple of years, I've made 100 plus videos and garnered literally dozens of views. I've never had a breakout video. I never had a very popular video. So everything that I'm about to tell you you should take with a grain of salt. Temper it with the question of what would somebody who's actually pretty successful at YouTube say? So I hope to give you context and maybe some encouragement if you're considering this and maybe you're on the fence. I'll talk about why you could do something like this, what it takes, how I do it, and then pow, I'm gonna peel back the curtain on some analytics. And then lastly, I'll just unload some unrequested advice. A few years ago, I had the honor to be a part of Ken Field's cartography MOOC, and I saw how fun and engaging and useful map making videos can be. And also around that time, I was mesmerized by the trailers of Masterclass. And I thought, maybe, you know, maybe I could do something kind of like this, but you know, lower production value. And of course, in my own experience, anytime I just need to see how something is done, I tend to open up YouTube so I can watch somebody walk me through that process. So I described my lofty goals to my boss and he wisely said, well, why don't you start out simple and just make some videos on your own and see how it works. I noticed in my own YouTube browsing that I would tend to avoid videos if they were longer than eight minutes. So that's about the time frame that I tried to stay under. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but around eight minutes seemed like a nice number. But I found myself repeating the same sort of steps over and over again in these somewhat longer videos. And I realized, well, why don't I just bake this down into simple one minute hacks, like uh, steps, like a recipe I can show all these one minute things and then assemble them in any manner I like. And I can kind of use them as components or Lego pieces in instruction. The one minute map hack. Have I actually used them as recipes for map building? No, but they are nice, handy, bite-sized map tips for folks. And here is my very fancy recording studio. It's just my office desk. I use Camtasia Studio, um, but you can use, you know, whatever works for you. It's $250 one time or $95 if you're a student. And here's my microphone. I started out using a headset and it stunk, but I didn't know it stunk until I got this new $65 microphone from Amazon, USB cable, and the difference was amazing. And for the webcam, I just use a Logitech 1080p webcam. It says it's 1080p, but I think it just records at 720 and upscales it because it still looks really junky. But that's okay for me because I am best photographed blurry. And of course, a YouTube account, which is free. Sort of, though nothing is free, really. I mean, they're making money by putting advertisements on your stuff, which surprised me because I did not have a monetized account. Watch out, they will put ads on your videos even though you aren't monetized. Ironically, you have to create a monetized account so you can set monetization to be off. That's the only way you can get no commercials on your videos. It's called the YouTube Partner Program. So heads up on that. Unlike virtually everywhere else on the internet, the comments section on YouTube Maker videos is actually really fun and supportive and a great community. You know, usually. But even the mean ones can be kind of fun, or at least tell you something. YouTube actually has a really good way of engaging with the community. You can ask questions, you can poll people. You know, these people said, I want more eight minute videos and I didn't do that. I gave them way more one minute videos. You don't always have to take the advice. It's your channel. Topics that they might want to see. And um, there's actually a little bit different vibe in YouTube compared to say Twitter, who 34% want me fired. What about watch time? Well, eh, I don't care about watch time. Only YouTube cares about watch time because they want people watching all the time. Maybe if you were monetizing, watch time is important. Actually, it would be very important. But frankly, it's kind of sad for me and sobering anyway. Like that's human life. Our only commodity is time. So I try not to look at that, 
but I do find interesting the view duration. So that shows the percentage of uh, how far people get through your video on average. That's interesting. This leads to what I think is the most important analytic, which is audience retention. This little line says how many people are still watching at a certain point in the video. And these are examples of good retention, and these are examples where people drop off. Watch, there's a correlation here. I'll select this. So people stay on when I jump right into an illustration or an example. See, illustrations, examples of things. Illustrations, examples. And they tend to plummet whenever they see my face. So take that for whatever it's worth. YouTube does track demographic stats too, like age. Almost exactly half of the views of my channel are 25 to 34 years old. I don't know how that compares to the rest of YouTube. And check this out on gender. It says 81% of my viewers are male. This made me sad for a long time. I was like really bummed out. Why is it so disparate? And then I looked at some of the specific videos. And I mean, this video has thousands of views and many of the comments are obviously from females. YouTube says it's 100% male viewership. So YouTube's gender data is junk. And there is a ton of overlap between the blogs that I write and the videos that I make. So for example, anytime almost I make a video, I'll also create a blog post which steps through all the sequences with more descriptions and some links. And this is reflected in the analytics. So you can see here external, which is blogs and tweets and stuff is 32%. But if you add up all the rest of these, the dominant traffic source is YouTube itself. Let's take a closer look at these external sources. Not surprisingly, the Esri blog is the lion's share, 52% of everything else, and some Google searches. But I was surprised by how little impact sharing things on Twitter, and especially LinkedIn, did. Twitter, 4.6%. LinkedIn, 3%. What about video thumbnails? Any advice there? Sure, I'm full of advice. And none of it is scientifically sound. It's just hunches. I use very bright, bold, vibrant snapshots from the map that I am demonstrating. So it's you know, topical. And then I'll have a shortened version of the title in big chunky text that's somewhat readable when it's seen at the natural thumbnail size. Okay, what about recording and editing strategies? Well, in my earliest videos, what I would do would be record just the video in one long take. And then in Camtasia, I would speed that up and then annotate over top of it. Because I saw YouTubers do that, like baking channels would do that. But it was actually pretty stressful and I was always playing catch up and I was kind of out of breath and I didn't like it as much. So lately what I've been doing is just recording the audio and video at the same time and just editing out the gaps and gaffs and uhs and ums in Camtasia. See all these vertical dashed lines in my Camtasia recording? Those are all the places where I had to edit out my ums and uhs and stuff but I definitely recommend doing a editing pass over the audio. You'll be surprised what a difference it makes. I also recommend walking all the way through your demo at least once before you actually record it. It'll be so much smoother and easier. And you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. What about flow and structure? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I like to be fast and clear with the video's purpose in the intro, right in the intro. Start with a question or a for instance. And when I'm performing the demo, I'll narrate aloud what I'm doing and why. And often questions are a nice segue. What if I wanted to do this? Wouldn't it be nice if you could do that? Oh boy, this one's controversial. Music. You know what? I like to put a little bit of ambient music in the background of mine. Early on, I started out making it too loud, got a lot of complaints. Now I get fewer complaints. YouTube has a pretty great library of royalty-free music options for you too. And my last bit of unrequested advice is serialize longer stuff. Duff. If you've got a really long video, just break it into two, three, or four videos. People don't mind that. And you can use the great feature of playlists to make them readily available with a single link. The trick is to very clearly exit and enter each video, introducing the video, summarizing what you've done in the previous one, and at the end, uh, inviting them to check out the next in the series. So in closing, with a different outfit on, I hope you give it a shot. If you're on the fence and thinking about this, just go for it. It gets easier. You learn more than you teach. And, well, what else was I going to say? <laughs>